then you are going to be unstoppable and nobody can stop you from getting a selection this year everybody can and everybody has started from somewhere even i have started from negative marks and i have improved to 120s and 130s and physics and chemistry there will be one day you will come out of your neat exam and feel that i have successfully done it course because you are not disciplined for your future you cannot stay motivated you cannot stay focused for your career bolito there is no point in doing anything just leave your books close your books and go away Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and we are down to the final month of preparing for NEET 2025 that is the last month which is April and after that on May 4th you are going to have your exam and this final month is a very crucial moment for every single aspirant for the entire 25 lakh people who are appearing for this exam because an average student can become a hero in these 30 days and a hero can become a zero. I'll point out every single mistake that you are probably making, 99% of the people are making these mistakes that is why they are being left behind in the competition and they can never see an improvement in their marks. Hello everyone, I am Akhil Raj, a third year MBBS student and we are trying to hit 10k subscribers before my birthday that is on June 8th so please hit that subscribe button because on this channel I want to give you complete unfiltered guidance i will be raw i will tell you everything as i feel and i will tell you everything as it is i won't make any changes i won't do any sugar coating for views so let's get started with the mistakes and the first and the very most common mistake is over motivation people what they'll do they will open youtube they'll start searching for motivational videos they'll start searching for roadmap videos that video this video they'll start searching at the end of the day what they'll do they'll get motivated and they'll make a schedule which will start at 4 a.m and after that they'll start studying for 16 hours and then at the end of the day they're only going to sleep for four hours and they're continuing this for the next three or four days and what will happen they'll start feeling the deficiency of sleep they'll start feeling sick they'll start feeling the burnout they'll start feeling fatigue and at the end of the day they are going to fail in the next three or four days again they are going to waste some time again they will realize that oh my god we are wasting so much time and they will again open youtube again watch a strategy video again watch a roadmap video this cycle is never ending unless and until you realize that it is not about show off by no matter how much show off you are doing there is no point don't do it for telling your friends that are bhai i am not at all sleeping only i am studying for need continuously 16 hours i am compromising my sleep i am compromising my health i am compromising eating so that you can flex in front of them that need is such a difficult exam and you know you get some sympathy or something from that but that is not point you won't get a result from it what is the point of studying so much if there is no quality in it if there is no knowledge in it so please stop doing show off and stick to a practical schedule. How will be a practical schedule? You have to prioritize quality more than quantity. You have to prevent burnout by taking small, small breaks in between. You have to give yourself some time to relax. It is not necessary that you have to stick the entire day with your desk and every single minute you have to study. Give yourself some time so that you can relax and get back to studying with high efficiency. Take seven to eight hours of sleep and this is very important. If you want, you can do six hours but not less than that. Six hours so compulsory you have to sleep because in the sleep only your memory is going to go from short term. Whatever you studied in the whole day, it is going to go from short term to long term. So the mediator for this is sleep. Discipline is very important. 16 hour schedule if you're doing for three and four days and stopping and then again wasting time for the next three or four days there is no point i want you to be disciplined or else just go and sleep leave your books leave everything and tell your parents that you're not going to plat need this year or you're going to take a drop or you're going to completely leave the course because you are not disciplined for your future you cannot stay motivated you cannot stay focused for your career bolito there is no point in doing anything just leave your books close your books and go away there is no point in wasting your parents money there is no point in showing them hope that you are going to somehow crack this exam on one day and come and tell them that i have cracked this exam i'm going to become a doctor they're waiting for you to tell that but all you're doing is wasting time and showing off in front of them that you are going to study for 16 hours but instead you're sitting and scrolling reels or you are not studying properly and wasting the entire time just acting like studying at your desk. Now the next important mistake is not doing analysis. Most of the people what they will think that my syllabus is only not complete. How can I give a full syllabus test? How can I solve questions? I may not solve the question because I did not study. So once I complete my syllabus, I will start studying. I'll do that. I'll do this. But trust me, your syllabus will never be complete. So please start giving questions because that is what will help you improve and get better at the topics which you're studying. Now why are questions so important? Bolito? It will force your brain to recall. Whatever you have studied, it will force your brain to recall. Array, what was the answer? Array, what is the logic? Array, what is the formula? How should I solve this problem? What is the concept that I read one day ago, two day ago, one week ago, one month ago that will help me solve this question? If you make a mistake inside the exam hall, then it is going to be in your memory. Next time that question appears or next time that concept appears then you'll realize that last time i made this mistake i used the wrong formula i used the wrong concept now this time i'm not going to make it wrong so you'll put the correct values you'll use the correct formula and you'll get the question correct it will improve your retention so that at the end of the day you don't have to sit down and revise the entire biology chemistry and physics on may 3rd or may 2nd or something because that is practically impossible you need to have things in your long-term memory so that you don't have to revise the entire syllabus on the last day and worry that are i forgot this are i forgot that and you're not going to forget only when you solve questions then analysis is improvement that is a basic solution i have told it a lot of times analysis karoge, tabhi you will understand your weak areas tabhi you will improve and your marks will improve. Even if you're afraid that you're going to score less and you will get demotivated bulge, you're scared, then it is the biggest mistake. Please start solving questions because last one month is very crucial for you to understand your time management strategy. You have to understand how to read the questions. You have to understand how to eliminate options and you have to understand how to pick between two options when you're confused. And all of this will come only when you start giving your more tests, okay? Now, instead of being demotivated, whenever you get less marks, think why you scored less. What are the mistakes I made? Do the analysis. Did I do silly mistakes? Did I get confused between two options? Did I do anything wrong that made me score less? What is the problem that I'm facing that is making me score less? Understand that. Analyze yourself by using mock tests, okay? Try again and again, face failure, and one day you will escape this cycle and suddenly you will reach success and this success is going to make you so happy because you have tried and failed so many times but you never gave up and finally you will one day crack this neat exam that hopefully is going to be this year. Next, the third mistake is going to be no goal for the day. You wake up and you are wasting time to decide what you are going to study. You decided that you are going to study for 12 hours. You made a practical schedule, okay. You thought that the next day you are going to study for 9 to 12. You woke up at 8.30 and you went to your desk and sat down by 9 o'clock and you started opening your books. You have opened biology, you opened chemistry, you opened physics. You have one chapter there, you have one chapter here, you have one chapter here. Now you are confused what 
what to do? You have 10 different options. Should I do PYQs? Should I solve my backlogs? Should I start revision? Should I solve physics? Should I do chemistry? What should I do? Well, okay, you will waste half an hour or one hour. Nine will be ten will be Already you wasted 30% of your study session. That was for three hours. Now it's already 10 o'clock. You'll get demotivated. You'll start studying and again at 12 o'clock, you'll get saturated and you'll take a break. What is the point of thinking that you're going to study for three hours and again wasting so much time? So to solve this problem, you have to give yourself a plan. A plan which you can follow right after you wake up. So make a plan right before you go to sleep. The day before, you're going to take a paper and write down every single thing that you're going to do the next day. So the next day, you can wake up and directly look at your to-do list and start studying whatever it is written. So 9 to 12, like you wrote down that you're going to do biology for two hours and then one hour, you're going to do PYQ practice. Immediately, 9 o'clock, you'll sit at your desk, open your book, start studying and then at 11 o'clock, you're going to solve PYQs. One hour, you're going to solve PYQs. Khatam, 9 to 12 study session is done. You don't have to waste any time making any decisions. Then the fourth mistake is wrong focus. What people will do in the last 30 days or during the preparation, they will use multiple sources. They'll do this book, that book, that book, this book. They'll follow one book for PYQs. They'll follow one book for custom modules. They'll do IIT, JEK physics questions, chemistry questions, and they'll think that they are going to get extra from the competition. They'll do tough questions. They'll use multiple resources, as I told, and they are going to solve hard, hard topics which will never be asked in the need. What their expectation will be, they'll think that they are going to become a topper, and they'll end up becoming a dropper after the result. Stick with the chapters which are highly yielding for you during your revision. I gave a list of high yield topics. Link will be in the description for the video. I gave 12 topics for physics and almost 13 or 14 topics for chemistry, I think. And those topics are very high yielding, and every year a lot of questions appear from those topics in neat exam. And if you are starting a revision, then your main priority should be first completing this and then only moving on to the hard topic. So prioritize your revision schedule and do more questions of the important topics because if five questions are coming from important topic, five of the five questions you have to definitely get them all right. Because if you make a silly mistake in the important topics, then there is no coming back. Because the competition is going to make it correct and you are going to go behind lakhs of rank behind a lot of people because you made a silly mistake in an easy question, in an expected question, in an highly alien topic question. So please don't make a mistake there. If you make a mistake in the hard topic, maybe most of the competition may also get that wrong. So we don't have to worry about that. But if you make a silly mistake in the easy topic, then there is no coming back and you will definitely lose a lot of ranks. So solve more questions from the important topics and then if you have some time left, if you are swearing one or two hours at the end of the day, then revise other chapters or solve questions from other chapters and focus those chapters so that you can boost your score more and more. Then the next mistake is going to be not doing analysis. See what people will do, they'll give a test, they'll calculate their mass. Uh, biology, I got this mass 300, for chemistry, I got 100, physics, I got 40 marks, I got 440, Chalo, they'll write 440, throw away the paper, khatam. They don't know what is the use of the paper, they'll forget what are the questions in the paper in the next two days, and khatam, completely it is deleted from the memory, and there is no point in giving that mock test if you're not doing analysis. Imagine a cricketer is going to a very important match and he hasn't done any practice in the last one month. Imagine he's not doing any net practice, imagine he's not doing any batting practice, and he's not working on his strategy. What will happen in the final match? He'll get stressed, or he won't know what to do, he won't be able to decide in the tense moment, and he'll end up scoring less or giving a wicket. So the point I want you to take away is that you have to do the net practice. You have to give mock tests. You have to practice number of questions so that you can understand how to read a question, how to eliminate between two options, how should I avoid silly mistakes, how should I manage time so that I can get more time for physics because I know I'm weak in physics, I know I'm weak in chemistry, I need more time to solve questions. You have to start solving biology fast, fast now. You don't have to make any mistakes in biology because if you make a mistake in biology, then there is no coming back. We all know that. So biology, you need at least 330 marks and you have to get them as fast as possible because you need more time for physics because you are weak at physics. So you have to build all the strategies by giving mock tests and analyzing them. That is very important. You have to analyze that how much time am I taking for solving a single question? Am I making any mistakes? Am I doing anything wrong that is probably decreasing my marks and I'm not realizing it inside the exam hall, but after coming out of the exam hall, I'm realizing it. So identify your mistakes. What type of mistake it is? Is it a guess? I got it wrong because of a guess. I did not know the concept. So is it that kind of thing? Is it conceptual? I studied it, but I made a mistake. Is it a silly mistake? I did not read the question properly. Is it a calculation mistake? If you forgot the formula, then you have to recollect that. All the mistakes, if you analyze for every single mock test you are writing, then you are going to be unstoppable and nobody can stop you from getting a selection this year because if you analyze all these mistakes, you will cover the topics more than once. You're going to read them again and again. And I told you that mistakes will give you a long-term memory and solving questions will give you active recall. That is the ultimate key for retention. So write the mistakes in the mistake book. Then you're going to revise the mistake book every single day or before your mock test so that you never make the mistake again. Sixth mistake is comparison. What they'll do in the last 30 days, they'll look at their friends, they'll look at their mock test marks and they'll get scared that, oh my God, my friend is studying this much. My classmates are studying this much. Everybody is scoring so much, but I'm studying for 12 hours. I am also studying for 13 hours. I am also solving questions, but what am I making a mistake? Okay? They'll start negative thinking. They'll become pessimistic and they'll start developing anxiety, depression, and they'll compare themselves with everyone and think that they are a failure and they will get demotivated. See, being sad and demotivated would have improved your marks, then every single neat aspirant would have sit down at their desk and started crying because improving marks is not about being sad. Do not try to copy anybody's plan because everybody is different. Everybody's needs are different. That person may have a different backlog. You may have a different amount of backlogs and you may have some other weaknesses and that person may have some other weaknesses. Your focus may be different. His focus may be different. And there is a lot of difference in every single person's preparation strategy. Don't follow anyone's preparation strategy blindly. Please make a preparation strategy for yourself. And then only you'll see an improvement. If you follow someone's, you are never going to see an improvement. You have to trust yourself at the end of the day with whatever preparation strategy you're following. And if they score more, you have to think that how you can also score more. Where can you show improvement? Like 600, 650, if your friend is scoring and you're stuck at 500 or 450, then what can you do so that you can reach their marks? What can you improve so that you can reach there? So think about it like that. Don't think that you are a failure or don't think that you cannot do this because everybody can and everybody has started from somewhere. Even I have started from negative marks and I have improved to 120s and 130s in physics and chemistry. So it is a long journey. I know you may feel demotivated. You may feel anxious.
positive in the last 30 days and motivate yourself for studying and the seventh is anxiety lot of people have a lot of problems they will have pressure from parents they will have the tension of getting less marks in their exams they will have a lot of backlogs they will have a lot of syllabus to cover and revise they will have self doubt and eventually this will lead to a big pile of stress and this stress will cause burnouts this will cause bad performance in your exam this will cause you to not study and lose your focus and make you overthink while you're at a study desk and you're thinking about what will happen in my exam will i make any silly mistake what will happen if i don't crack the exam that this 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 but okay you will start daydreaming and you will get demotivated you will waste a lot of time then what the student will do they'll scold themselves and more burnout and more demotivation will happen by doing that negative thinking so handle stress by taking small breaks by going for a walk in the evening or talk with your friends and family whom you feel are a safe place to express your emotions you can do some yoga or workout if you are into some physical activity then you can do some meditation or you can listen to your favorite music for some time take some small breaks because 16 hours is not possible as i said in the starting of the video so take some small breaks and improve yourself and handle your stress so that your brain can work at 100% efficiency every single time you're studying thinking about future won't show any improvement in your present life or in your future in your neat exam because thinking doesn't get you anything actions will get you something so start studying from now give you 100% give everything you have for this 30 days for the next one month you have to become a monk and sit down and study every single day i hope you'll stand strong and get through every single thing even if you're worried even if you're anxious even if you're depressed there will be one day you will come out of your neat exam and feel that i have successfully done it you have to look back and tell yourself that i have given my 101% and i am very satisfied with what i did i did everything possible and i'm very proud of myself that i have been through this i have sacrificed so much i have sacrificed movies i have sacrificed my favorite activities and today i'm getting the result of it and one day you're going to stand in front of your parents and tell that you're going to a medical college you're going to your dream college you're going to become a doctor you're going to make them proud you're going to make their dreams come true and you have to live for that moment for the next 30 days keep that in your mind that one day you will go and stand in front of your parents and proudly tell that you have cracked this exam finally and you're going to become a doctor for the next 30 days that is going to be your motivation to study for 12 hours 13 hours 14 hours whatever is possible and sit down and give your 100 percent so that you can make your parents proud one day all the best and thanks for watching i'll see you next Wednesday. until then bye bye